want to share with you. Um, I was here for the presentation this morning, and um, a lot of the focus when we talked about youth was on foster youth. So I, I kind of go along with the speaker before me to say, don't forget about our, our unaccompanied youth, who could be anywhere from 14 to 25, and many of those services, you have to be over 18 to access a lot of services. There's not a lot, as the speaker before me was saying, that are age-appropriate services. These kids wind up in really incredibly dangerous situations trying, trying to just access resources. My job as, as the Homeless Liaison with the, the LA County Office of Ed is to work with school districts and our charter schools, which are 270 charter schools in 80 school districts across our county. And there's a homeless liaison in each district. So I also want to implore, implore, implore you, sorry, that as you go through and looking for solutions and collaborations, not to forget about the, edu the educational piece, because we want our kids to finish school, to graduate, to move on to co college and pursue their dreams, but they need an education to make sure they're staying out of the cycle of poverty. So we're here to work with you and support your, your efforts. We just want, don't forget about our kids, and I'm not, and not, they're not all foster youth, and so just please keep that in, in mind as you pursue Leaving the workforce, 
not contributing to their social security, not contributing to retirement. As these people age, it will replicate the cycle of the need of the affordable housing due to the sheer number of people that are aging in California. We ask that you please take into account that seniors uh, will cost the state a lot of money if we don't start looking at this now and earmarking some of that funding specifically for seniors. Good morning, my name is Adriana Mendoza, and I'm the manager of outreach programs for ARP California, and also a member of the Los Angeles Aging Advocacy Coalition. Um, so thank you, senators, for hosting this forum today. Uh, the average age of a homeless older adult is 53, with a life expectancy of 64. Older homeless people have a higher frequency of health problems and frailty than younger homeless people. They are therefore less likely to survive exposure to severe conditions such as extreme heat or, or cold weather. They are also more vulnerable to unsafe and unsanitary conditions which can exacerbate health problems that may accompany aging. Homelessness and nursing homes are a last resort for older adults with unaddressed housing needs. Policy interventions can reduce the numbers of older adults who are in these circumstances. The physical and mental health of this group may suffer without adequate housing or regular medical and support services. Homeless older adults have a mortality rate that is three to four times that of the general population. That's why AARP supports legislation that, that removes barriers to building affordable housing throughout the state. In California, our primary priority issue is livable communities for all ages. And we are working in lo local jurisdictions to support local efforts that create solutions to health and homelessness. We are fighting at the federal level to restore cost of living and increases to Social Security, and at the state level to restore cuts to that society has to be. Thank you. Afternoon now. My name is Eric Adams. I am here on behalf of the Right to Rest Coalition and the Western Regional Advocacy Project. We are working, we are 150 organizations statewide coalition who are working to end the criminalization of homelessness. Um, we are currently co sponsors of SB 608, the Right to Rest Act, which is authored by Senator Liu. Uh, just wanted to say a couple things. As you're on your tour today, um, I want you, I would encourage you to, to look at the community of Skid Row from a particular lens, which is uh, not only lens of homelessness, but understanding that Skid Row is the most heavily policed community in the entire country in terms of officers per capita and 50 square block area. And I say that because a couple of things you didn't hear today from the experts um, who are representing a lot of models that, um, that should be uh, highlighted is that there's a 15,000 person wait list in, in the coordinated entry system, right? 15,000 people. And that for what the city is doing to try to uh, reprioritize re the approach to homelessness, last year, the city spent $100 million on homelessness. 87 of that $100 million went to LAPD to largely arrest and harass homelessness. And so it's important, it is, it is impossible to have these discussions. We shouldn't have these discussions without discussing how law enforcement and policing oftentimes is de facto policy in managing homelessness. And so what we're trying to end the crisis and create and highlight the models um, for change that are successful and have been space. We have to have a discussion around you know, how, to, how it's difficult to get somebody on the CES system if they're hiding in different areas for fear of being uh, harassed or cited or arrested for homeless. Or it's impossible for an outreach worker to connect with a homeless individual if they are in jail. Or it's hard for someone who's homeless to get a job if they have an arrest record, record simply for life-sustaining activities like resting, sleeping. Um, and so we can start with, with SB 608. I know I'm speaking to the choir a little bit because the bill is, is currently in your committee, uh, Senator Bell, and is sponsored by Senator Lou. So we know you all um, have an opportunity to push that forward. Excuse me. Uh, an opportunity to move forward, but really, I think it's important to go beyond that and take this message back to the legislature. And as different uh, government levels are, are, are having these discussions, city, county, statewide, understanding that the city of LA passed a, a motion opposing the Right to Rest Act, right? And 
And so we have to have those conversations that are not easy, that are difficult conversations, but that are essential because we cannot highlight and talk about these issues. We cannot fully implement these successful solutions unless we begin to tackle the issues that are directly um, preventing these solutions from being uh, successful. So again, here support SB608, support of all these models, support of this hearing, but we have to uplift the issue of criminalization of homelessness because we are not going to arrest our way out of this issue. Certain jobs. So, Mr. Clemmy talked about 70%. The answer to 
one of the study group, 70% of that wants to um, find employment. How can you find employment if you're still stuck in the criminal justice system? This is why it's a really good opportunity for the state and take, the, and take leadership in ensuring that the cities and Los Angeles and other cities and criminalization are supporting the Senator's Bill um, SB 608. Thank you.
for a transitional shelter, which I never got into. The second, I still get out a winter shelter, which they offered me shared housing. Not very acceptable. The third, I filled out at something called the Connect Day. I got a shower. Wow! I got a backpack that fell apart on me. Nobody contacted me. I've gone to other Connect Days, the same thing. And another thing we have in the valley is I pick showers at an agency called Hope of the Valley. Hope of the Valley is leaving Sun Valley. It is moving to Van Nuys. They don't like homeless people in Van Nuys. The church that they're giving us the showers at told us we have to go somewhere else between our meals and our showers. This is where I am Thank you. They will be harassed by the police who must kick them out. And that is all I got to say. Thank you. Good afternoon, Senators. My name is General Goga, and I'm born and raised right here in Steelville. I'm also a, a civil rights organizer with Ellen King. <clears throat> Just a week and a half ago, the mayor and the, uh, five other city council members stood right outside this door right here on the line and declared a state of emergency on homelessness. I was there at that press conference, and I asked him, I said, uh, where's Chief Becker? And Herb West shouted back out to me and said, this is not about Chief Becker. Three days later, LAPD shot and killed a homeless woman just less than 20 blocks away from where they declared the state of emergency on 21st of San Diego. For the last nine years, uh, residents of Skiro have been organizing residents to fight back against the racist and oppressive race of a police initiative, a uh, uh, sacred city initiative, which is a police initiative uh, that came downtown to basically gentrify poor homeless people out of Skiro. And basically for the last nine years, what they've been doing is building club and homeless people from South Central to Venice to Hollywood to the county jail back to Skid Row. Just running a recycle system, right? A waste of resources. Uh, hundreds of millions of dollars have been put into LAPD to the police their way out of homeless. And I agree with the brother that came up here earlier. They said about what the mayor and they come up here and they speak. They talk in good sound about what the city got planned and what they're doing, but actually all the money is going to the police. Check the books. You will see that the police are getting all the money. Just last week, right across the hallway, they had a homeless committee. They created a committee within the last couple of months to address this issue. Right? And last week, the business improvement district was in here. Right? And every last one of them got up here and was talking about we need the city right now to get up and move. Force and get these people out the street. Where they go, we don't care. We want you to get out there and get them. And that's what the, the city's been listening to. They've been doing that. And, but it, it's time for a new day. And I, I thank y'all for coming out here. And I think you guys have started this new day. And But that's going to take a while for this thing to manifest. So it's things you can do right now on the block to stop those things. One, you can tell the mayor and you can tell Chief Beck that we ain't giving you a dime. Until you stop the enforcement. Because no matter what, all these folks that are doing something that's good ideas and plans, it ain't gonna happen. Because as long as Chief Bank got the, the guys out there with the billy clubs, swinging the billy clubs, people are gonna be running. And they're gonna never be able to sit long enough to get nothing. Right? Two is that uh, we need to start investing into the community. Right? I heard all of these academics, but some of they, they, these academics are still in college. Right? They ain't graduated yet. The residents, uh, 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 community organized, we on the streets. We on the streets, we know those, the folks that's on the streets. Those are our loved ones, right? We in the trenches out there every day with them. We got the communication going with them. Uh, we know the solution, we know the problem. We need, they need to invest into community, right? And I, and I want to say also is that I'm gonna see you today, and I'm gonna judge on that too. And uh, we gonna get down to business and we gonna find out some real issues on the scale of Thank you for your time. Part of the Health Homes Initiative, and very excited uh, 
the city of Santa Cruz uh, support of finding a solution to the housing situation. The, the one thing that I saw or heard missing in a lot of the conversations today was accessible housing. At least 20% uh, of the last numbers that I've seen of people that are homeless are physically disabled. The very last thing we want to do is find homes for people so that they'll become prisoners in their home. If they can't get out of there, there's no stairs, or if there's stairs, no elevators. So we want to make sure that that word accessible also gets included. So it should be accessible affordable housing. And we just wanted to, I, I just wanted to uh, make sure that that is on, as you guys are helping and delivering and trying to find solutions that we include this, people with physical disabilities. One thing I don't think that comes through loudly enough in some of the 
because of this criminalization regime. Um, it just, I, I, I feel that it's so, so detrimental to any effort to solve the homeless problem, and it's just a critical component along with the housing that people need. Um, I'll just give one example of uh, a gentleman I was speaking with last night, as a matter of fact, who tries to go to the local shelter, gets rejected um, because there's not enough space, tries to sleep in the parking lot of the shelter because he feels that it's the only safe place that he could be if something were to happen and he could bang on the door of the shelter to try to get home. And the police come and give him a ticket for sleeping in the parking lot and he doesn't try to obtain the shelter at night to obey the law. Um, he became so desperate that he wanted to Ended up in the hospital for 10 days, um, lost the, the job that he had, and um, had to just sort of start all over trying to rebuild his life from scratch. So these are the kinds of stories I'm hearing. I just thought I'd, I'd share that with you briefly.